In this video, we will be rotating two-dimensional shapes around other axes, so not the x and y axes, but other axes, to form three-dimensional shapes, and then we'll be finding the volume of those shapes. Recall from the previous lesson, 8.9, that if the region is rotated around the x-axis or a horizontal axis, the way that you find the volume is by taking pi and then multiplying that by the integral from a to b of the radius in terms of x squared dx. But if the region is rotated around the y-axis or a vertical axis, then you say v is equal to pi times the integral from a to b of the radius in terms of y squared dy. So now we're going to revolve those 2D shapes around other axes to generate three-dimensional shapes. And as we discussed in the previous lesson, it's always a good idea to sketch the radius in one disk to visualize what you're doing a little bit more. Here's a helpful chart. How do you know whether you're going to integrate with respect to x or y? Well, you are going to be integrating with respect to x if the shape is revolving ar around a horizontal line and the disks are perpendicular to the x-axis. Integrate with respect to y if the shape is revolving around a vertical line or the disks are perpendicular to the y-axis. You should also be prepared to integrate manually using the fundamental theorem of calculus or integrate with the graphing calculators. Be prepared to do both on the AP exam and in this video. The area bounded by y is equal to x squared plus x plus 1 and y is equal to 7 is revolved about the line y is equal to 7. Find the volume of the resulting solid. The first step, as always, is to sketch out the equation so that you can see the region that you're going to be rotating. I've done that in advance for us for this question. So here is the parabola and there is the line y is equal to 7. And those lines are intersecting at negative 3, 7, and 2, 7. So now, instead of revolving this parabola around the x-axis, we're going to be revolving it around the line y is equal to 7, but it's another horizontal line. So the next step is to sketch in what the other half of the revolution looks like. So if you rotate this thing around the line y is equal to 7, the other half is going to look something like that. Then sketch in one radius. So one radius might look like that, and then you can also sketch the disk that goes along with that radius, so that disk will look something like that. And that's not a great sketch of the disk, but that's okay. We just need to have it in there so that you can visualize it. Now I need to find the radius. I will be finding the radius in terms of x in this case because the disk is perpendicular to the x-axis. And we are revolving this solid around a horizontal line. Those are indicators that we're going to be integrating with respect to x, so we need to find the radius in terms of x. The radius, which is this length right here, so that right there is our radius, we take our top curve and subtract the bottom curve. The top curve is 7, and then we subtract the bottom curve, which is y is equal to x squared plus x minus 1. That's the bottom curve. Make sure that you put the bottom curve in parentheses. So 7 minus parentheses x squared plus x plus 1. That would be the radius. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and I'm going to do that because this is a non-calculator problem. We're going to have to integrate this manually, and it's going to be easier to integrate if we've kind of pre-simplified pre it. So this would turn into negative x squared minus x plus 6. That is the expression for r of x, the radius. Now I'm going to come up with my volume integral. Now we use the same rule here. We do pi times the integral from a to b along the x-axis, which would be from negative 3 to 2 integral from negative 3 to 2 of the radius, which is negative x minus, sorry, negative x squared minus x plus 6 squared dx. And you might be thinking, well, how am I going to integrate that? That looks pretty hard. Yeah, it does look kind of hard. We're going to have to take this entire thing and we're going to have to square it there. When you are squaring a three-term polynomial, you might find it helpful to make a chart like this so that you can do this. And then negative x squared times negative x squared, that's x to the fourth. This is x cubed, this is negative 6x squared, and then fill in the rest of the chart. Then write out the completed polynomial. So that would be x to the fourth plus 2x cubed, um, and then we have negative 6x squared, positive 1x squared, and negative 6x squared. So that will be minus 11x squared minus 12x plus 36. That's a pretty long polynomial, but we're going to stick that in there because now we've squared this radius and we still have our dx on the end. Now I'm going to find the antiderivative of what is inside there. It's gonna be a pretty long antiderivative. So we'll have x to the fifth over five plus two x to the fourth over four minus 11 x cubed over three minus 12 x squared over two plus 36 x. And we are evaluating that entire thing at negative three and two. Then I'm just going to go through, plug in two, subtract plugging in three.
that would be the volume of that solid. Find the volume of the solid generated when the region bounded by y is equal to the square root of x over 2 plus 1, x is equal to 4, and y is equal to 3 is rotated around the horizontal line y is equal to 3. First thing I'm going to do is sketch out all of these functions. x is equal to 4 is going to be a vertical line, and y is equal to 3 will be a horizontal line. I'm also going to label these points of intersection. So this is actually a really, really tiny region that we're going to be dealing with because it's the region that is enclosed right here. So I'll try to shade it in. It's pretty small though. And we know that this region, this tiny little triangle sliver-like thing is going to be rotated around the horizontal line y is equal to three. So I'm going to sketch in the other side of if we were to rotate it around. And then the radius is going to be going from here, from there to right there. It's a very tiny radius. And then one disc would look like that. Now let's find r of x, the radius in terms of x. We're finding it in terms of x because we will be integrating with respect to x because this shape is revolving around a horizontal line and this disk is perpendicular to the x-axis. So r of x, that's going to be the top curve minus the bottom curve. The top curve, we know that that is y is equal to 3, so 3 minus, and then the bottom curve is the square root of x over 2 plus 1. So minus square root x over 2 plus 1. Do not forget to put that entire function in parentheses there when you subtract it. Then I come up with the volume integral. So we have pi and then the integral from what to what. So I know that we were going from x is equal to 4 to x is equal to 8 because this point of intersection between this curve and y is equal to 3 is occurring at 8. So we are going from 4 to 8 along the x-axis and then we plug in the radius, 3 minus the square root of x over 2 plus 1, and don't forget to put those parentheses on there, and then square the entire radius, dx. Then you can get out the graphing calculator and plug that in. Don't forget to put the parentheses on your graphing calculator as well. The volume of this region is going to be 1.314. Here's another graphing calculator problem. The area in the first quadrant bounded by y is equal to e to the x minus 2, the x-axis and x is equal to 2 is revolved about the line x is equal to 2. Find the volume of the resulting solid. First thing I do is I sketch out all of my functions in the coordinate plane. So I know that y is equal to e to the x looks something like this. So that's the general shape of the curve y is equal to e to the x. But then if it's minus 2 at the end, that just means that I've moved the curve down 2. I can get a point at x is equal to 0 because if I plug in 0 for x here, e to the 0 is equal to 1. So 1 minus 2, that will be negative 1. So I know that my curve will be, be passing through the point 0, negative 1. And then I'm just going to sketch the rest of that e to the x curve. It says it's also bound by the line x is equal to 2. So I will sketch x is equal to 2. But when I sketch the line x is equal to 2, I don't know if it's supposed to be over here or over here. So I can plug in 2 into this function. If I say y is equal to e squared minus 2, well, that's going to be a positive number. So I know that it's going to be on this side of that x-intercept. So that will be the line x is equal to 2. That's a vertical line right there. So this is my region here that I'm going to be dealing with. That shaded region is the region that I will be revolving around the line x is equal to 2. Now, if I'm revolving it around the line x is equal to 2, I'm going to sketch in the other side of the curve there. Looks something like that. And then I'll sketch a radius. In this case, the radius is horizontal. We are no longer dealing with a vertical radius. And then I sketch in one of my disks there. That means that I need to find r of y, the radius in terms of y, instead of the radius in terms of x. So how do I find what this distance right here is? Well, I can take the right curve minus the left curve, both in terms of y. The right curve is going to be 2. And then the left curve, I need to get that left curve in terms of y, so I need to isolate x. If I take y is equal to e to the x minus 2 and I'm trying to isolate x, I can say y plus 2 is equal to e to the x, and then the natural log of y plus 2 is equal to x. So now I will do 2 minus the left curve, which in terms of y is going to be natural log of y plus 2. And now that I have my radius, I can come up with my integral for the volume. Volume will be pi times the integral from what to what along the y-axis. This is different now. We're not looking along the x-axis. We are looking along the y-axis to find our bounds. So we're going from 0 to, but then what is this intersection point? This is a graphing calculator problem, so I'm going to figure out what that intersection point is using the graphing calculator. 
Instead of graphing out these two functions, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to plug x is equal to 2 into this function right here. So if I have e to the power of 2 minus 2, that's going to be this value right here. So I'm going to leave on a lot of decimals because you can't run until you're done with the problem. Upper bound is 5.3890561. Then right here, I plug in my radius in terms of y. So I have 2 minus parentheses natural log of y plus 2. And then that entire thing needs to get squared and stick a dy on the end. Then you can grab the calculator again and plug that in. Remember, when you're plugging in something in terms of y, you can just write x in the calculator. The calculator does not care whether you do x or y. Make sure to hang on to all of your decimals there. And the volume for this one is 6.707. There's the answer. Find the volume of the solid generated when the region bounded by y is equal to the square root of negative x minus 4, x is equal to negative 8, and the x-axis is rotated around the vertical line x is equal to negative 8. The first step, as always, is just to sketch out this function in the coordinate plane, or sketch out all of these functions, or relations in this case, because x is equal to negative 8 is not a function. And I've already done that to save some time for this problem. Now we need to sketch in one radius. It says it's rotated around the vertical line x is equal to negative 8. So if we sketch in the other side, that looks something like this, and then sketch in one radius, and it looks like that. And then you can draw one disk. Now we need to find what the radius is equal to. We'll be finding the radius in terms of y because our disk is perpendicular to the y-axis, and we're rotating it around a vertical line. So r of y is equal to, and then we'll do right curve minus left curve. We know that the left curve is x is equal to negative 8, but the right curve is currently in terms of x, and we need it to be in terms of y. So if we have y is equal to the square root of negative x minus 4, and we're trying to get that in terms of y, we just need to isolate x. And we get x is equal to negative y squared minus 4. So now we can take the right curve, which is negative y squared minus 4, and then subtract the left curve. Right curve minus the left curve, which in this case is negative 8, so minus negative 8. Then we can clean this up a little bit. So if we have negative y squared minus 4 minus negative 8, that's minus 4 plus 8, so plus 4. There's our radius. Now we can come up with the integral for the volume. So we stick a pi on the beginning, and then we're looking at the integral from 0 to 2, because our point of intersection here is negative 8 comma 2. So along the y-axis, we're going from 0 to 2, and then we have our radius, which is negative y squared plus 4 squared dy. Now it is time to manually integrate because we don't get a graphing calculator here. So we would say v is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 2. And then I need to FOIL this out in here. I need to do negative y squared plus 4 times negative y squared plus 4. That would be y to the 4th minus 8y squared plus 16 with our dy still at the end. Then I find the antiderivative of what's inside here, which is y to the fifth over 5 minus 8y cubed over 3 plus 16y, evaluated at 0 and 2. Then I say v is equal to pi, keeping the pi on there. And then I just need to plug in the 2, because when I plug in the 0, if I do minus plugging in all the zeros, that's just going to produce 0. So I'll just have 2 to the fifth over 5 minus 8 thirds times 2 cubed plus 16 times 2. And then I just evaluate that arithmetic. The solution here is 256 pi over 15. What is the volume of the solid generated when the region bounded by the graph of y is equal to negative 3x, the horizontal line y is equal to 6, and the x-axis is revolved around the line y is equal to 6? First step is to sketch out all of these functions. So if I have the line y is equal to negative 3x, that's going to look something like this, passing through the origin, and then, the, and then the slope should probably be a little bit less steep right there. And then I need to figure out where is it intersecting the line y is equal to 6. Well, if I plug in 6 for y here, that would be occurring at x is equal to negative 2. So over at negative 2, that's where the intersection is occurring, at negative 2 comma 6. And then that means that this enclosed region right here, that's the region that I will be revolving around the line y is equal to 6. So if I'm revolving this around the line y is equal to 6, that means that one radius looks like this, because the other half would look like that, and then one disk would look like that. Now let's find the radius. In this case, I'll be finding r of x because we're working perpendicular to the x-axis here. This means that the radius will be the top curve minus the bottom curve. 
the top curve is the line y is equal to 6. So we have 6 minus, and then the bottom curve is y is equal to negative 3x. So 6 minus negative 3x. This means that r of x is really equal to 6 plus 3x. Now for the volume, we have volume is equal to pi times the integral from a to b along the x-axis, because we're working perpendicular to the x-axis. So from negative 2 to 0, and then we take our radius, which is 6 plus 3x, and we square it and stick a dx at the end. Now we need to evaluate this manually because we don't have a graphing calculator on this problem. So the first step, I'm going to keep the pi on there and I'm going to keep the negative 2 and the 0 right there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to FOIL out 6 plus 3x. So that's going to be 9x squared plus 36x plus 36 dx. Then I'm going to use the fundamental theorem, finding the antiderivative of what's inside here. That would be 9x cubed over 3 plus 36x squared over 2 plus 36x, and I'm evaluating that at negative 2 and 0. Then I plug in 0, and I subtract plugging in negative 2. Once you simplify that, you get 24 pi. This means that d is the correct answer. Let A be the region in the first quadrant bounded by y is equal to the sine of x, the vertical line x is equal to 0 0.5, and the x-axis. Write, but do not evaluate, an integral that gives the volume of the solid generated when region A is revolved around the vertical line x is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so very first step, I want to sketch this out. So since I know that I'm going to be working with sine, I'm actually going to be marking this off in terms of radians. So I will have one up here and negative one down here, but then along my x-axis, I'm going to mark things like pi over 2 and pi. Now I need to sketch the sine curve. The sine curve starts at 0, 0, and I know that the sine of pi over 2 is 1, and the sine of pi is 0. So the first curve is going to look something like that. However, it says that it's bounded by y is equal to sine of x and the vertical line x is equal to 0 0.5. Now, 0 0.5, that's not in terms of pi, so what am I going to do there? Well, pi over 2, pi we know is 3.14-ish, so if I have about 3.14 divided by 2, that's going to be much more than 0.5. So 0.5 is going to be somewhere over here, probably. I will label that line, I will say x is equal to 0 0.5. So this right here is the actual region that we, that we will be revolving around the line x is equal to 0 0.5. So I'm just going to erase the rest of my sine curves so that I don't get confused there. Now keep in mind, we do not actually have to evaluate this. We just have to write the integral. First, I need to figure out what one radius is. The radius is going to be going this way since we are revolving it around the vertical line x is equal to 0.5. So the other side will look like that and one disk will look something like that. I will be developing r of y since my disk is perpendicular to the y-axis. So r of y will be the right curve, which is 0 0.5, minus the left curve. Now the left curve, right now we have y is equal to sine of x, but that's in terms of x. We need to get that in terms of y. I'm going to rewrite that as x is equal to arc sine or inverse sine of y. Now that's in terms of y. So when I have my right curve minus my left curve, my left curve will be the arc sine of y. Now I can write the integral for the volume. I will have a pi on the outside, and then where am I going along the y-axis? I'm going from 0 to what? What is that right there? Well, if I plug in 0 0.5 to my sine function, that will give me the coordinate of intersection. Now, I don't know what the sine of 0 0.5 is off the top of my head, so I'm just going to leave that as the sine of 0.5. So from 0 to the sine of 0.5 along the y-axis, and then I stick in my radius, which is 0.5 minus the arc sine of y, and then we square that entire thing and stick a dy on the end. And that would be the completed expression for v.